Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel Be Cloud Ready. And basically in this channel we every week or by say monthly we are we try to bring some something related to latest technology specifically to big data and cloud and we like to keep di di different webinars to actually explain people specifically who are like want to come on board into this industry and want to maybe work or maybe want to build a product or want to do a startup so while doing that i meet a lot of people in toronto and see what they are doing it and specifically anybody who is interested enough to build some product together or maybe want to get into the industry for doing that i uh, last few months i have been talking to tao she's my good friend and she has been interested in uh, big data cloud industry and she really want to get into the industry and maybe as a job and she's very interested in creating a lot of analytics around the marketing side and you know to do that before you do any analytics she need to understand a little bit about data a little bit of cloud pretty much everything and when we are talking about although she had a lot of good ideas about product the key challenge for us her was how to begin with where she start if even if she's looking for a job or something how to begin in this because there are so many talk about there and nobody seems to get it so this is what this uh, interview i thought i should do with her to actually go in a very basic where we will talk about how to approach a cloud engineering prof career and from a non technical perspective assume you are not coming from a system background or a cloud background how do you approach this job market and how to succeed in it and i have been doing this for 3 years i have trained many people and most people have the same problem at the beginning and so this is why i had to have this video so that can be helpful for everybody so welcome me uh, along welcome tao for this uh, and thank you for joining us for the video today Thank you, Chanan, for the introduction. And yes, a couple of years ago, um, I have heard a lot of words like cloud, big data, uh, AI, and uh, blockchain. There's so much information out there that is uh, almost impossible for me to figure it out. How I could, uh, sh what should I do? Um, how should I start with if I want to get in this field? Yeah, and to be honest, yeah, absolutely, it's, yeah, it's completely it was really, crazy. really confusing. And to I me. remember, like you were talking about, like I think you or your friend they wanted to get into devops and cloud world yeah. and they didn't know how to start about it no no so it's exactly why i'm i'm here and i wanted to ask you the question as well so when you talk about the cloud and we talk uh, you talk about the devops so what kind of a skill with uh, should a person to start uh, to begin with that is a great question and i get a lot in any of the boot camp i do people pretty much they people come to me and say okay i want to be a cloud cloud master or something uh, in a one month Mm -hmm. to be honest is not possible okay so if you want to really serious about cloud and say devops or any kind of skill you're looking for so you're looking for key essential skills i will say like around say four to five skills that you must have first thing is you have to get linux linux is the fundamental for all cloud all automation that you are right now talking about and the beauty of right now the linux is when i started say 15 years ago learning linux mean it was pain because it, in internet that not too much information as out there only way you can do through man pages and maybe ask someone now so much information is the internet internet is only good when you know what you're looking for if you don't know what you're looking for you are just lost and second thing about it is that in nowadays linux world you don't have to be a guru system admin to master it what all you can do is get familiarity with linux see how it works just basic concept how it boots some in the command line how you can browse through the directories that is mm -hmm. the key thing because i have a lot of people talk about okay uh, i downloaded the file where it is so these basic things once you get familiar with command line and how to navigate the directory tree mm -hmm. that is the one big boon i will say just get familiarity with linux you don't have to be a guru second thing i will say when you are talking about devops git is a tool which you have to understand which is mm -hmm. your source control any time in a cloud engineering world what happens is whenever you do any changes into the system mm -hmm. you have to register the change so that once you so you are not there someone else they can actually see what change go, went on and mm -hmm. that is coming from developer world because most people who are coming from operation side or maybe non technical they don't understand the concept of source code control mm -hmm. so that i will say should be in your belt and the third thing is that pick one configuration management tool mm -hmm. just any 
And right now, Ansible is very hot. Reason being simple, because Ansible gives you a client-less approach. And plus, especially for someone like you who has no developer background. Yeah. So for you, it is a very good that you start with Ansible, you get a little bit hands dirty on Linux, mm -hmm. and then you start playing with Ansible. And Ansible gives you, without any programming language, you can configure your system, you can deploy mm -hmm. something on cloud, play something. And over a period of time, you will start understanding what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So this will be two, three tool stack, which is base. And on top of that, when I'm talk, anybody talks about say DevOps, DevOps. So usually DevOps has like two segments right. broadly. One is that you do the management of the system mm -hmm. and on the other side, you help developers. That is what the full form is DevOps, developer operation. Mm -hmm. So you help developer to do the operation jobs in an automatic fashion. Mm -hmm. And that involves you have to help them. You have to understanding some kind of like build automation tool. If you are a software developer, probably if you are joining as a DevOps, you are not a software developer, but you have to help software developer to deliver their code into say any environment or any production. So that kind of thing, you have to understand a little bit about build process, like how a programming language works. Take an example, Java, mm -hmm. how Java works. You don't have to be Java developer. Don't get me wrong. You just have to understand how Java works and what are, how to compile it like mm -hmm. Maven. And also I'm talking about your Jenkins. These are like tools which will help you there. So these are, the, I will say, big chunk of item. Pretty much you see any job description, you will find it. And after the last but not the least, because now we are moving, everybody's talking about cloud, 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 even though you are an on-prem. So just pick any cloud and then you should be a good starting point for you. Okay, but there's so many cloud out there. <laughs> it's Amazon, Google, Microsoft, yeah, all yeah, the good, I, good yeah, choices. And they're just, just growing by number day by day. Which one should we choose? I mean, I will say, I will say don't get overwhelmed with it because see, pretty much any cloud you talk about, mm -hmm. they are more or less same. Same right. when I say in the sense like, uh, how do I say that? Because see, you have Amazon. So take an example, your PC your computer, right? You mm -hmm. open your computer, open in Gmail. How much Gmail is different from Hotmail? Or is it too much different from say Yahoo Mail? They are pretty much similar, like all are giving similar kind of services. Mm -hmm. This is called software as a service, SaaS model. So when you're talking about that, so if someone says, hey man, uh, I want to learn Gmail. No, no. Once you understand how email works, it doesn't matter which provider it is, it will work beautifully for everyone. So same way, pretty much all cloud providers, they have a set of services and tools which are available, like getting a virtual machine, getting a storage, like in Amazon, they call S3. In uh, Azure, they call something else. So product naming could be different, like in deletion of something, anything like in an email, you have some provider calls something else, someone calls something else. So it's just a productization has been done differently, but the core concept remains the same. If you go to any cloud, what you do, you create instance. Mm -hmm. Say you're creating a virtual machine, you want to say you, you want to get a big data, say for your case, like you are a marketing professional and want to interest in data. So in that case, you are looking for ingest your large amount of data into big data cluster, or maybe in a large data set into Amazon, AWS, S3. So in Amazon world, they call it S3, but in Google world, they may call something else. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take away the fact that the underlying concept remains the same. So same, I will say, pick any of the cloud that you like and then start building. I will say just start with Amazon has your 12 month free tier. Azure has your 12 month free tier and they are very good because they give one month fully paid like $250 credit. Just do whatever you want. Google gives around similar, I think three, four hundred dollar credit. Mm -hmm. So depending upon which one you like, which one you want to do and which is closer to your work, basically Say, assume you're at your work, people want to migrate to Amazon. So just pick Amazon or maybe Google, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. And try to understand the fundamentals, like mm -hmm. how I create, I can create an instant, how can create a storage, how can create the access control, those things, right. basic framework. And try to do it programmatically using, mm -hmm. as I said, Ansible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in one of the training program that we do is one of the most popular right now is Ansible. So Ansible, what I teach on that is basically use Ansible first, understand Ansible. 
don't go to Google, just try to understand. And then using Ansible, we try to create infrastructure, deploy something in Amazon, Azure, Google. And so I give you tools, everything that you want to use. And from that on, you can keep on building on top of it. So I will say to begin with, pick any cloud, stick it, with, stick with it for at least, I will say three to six months. Mm -hmm. Don't leave before that, because if someone's like, hey, man, uh, this uh, Google is getting harder. Don't move right away. Just mm -hmm. stick with it. And over a period of time, you will get better. That's great to know. Thank, Thank you. you. So this was all about the technology industry itself. So what about jobs? Yeah, How so do we <laughs> know to target that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and uh, interesting that I was uh, and day before yesterday, we, I had a meetup here and I was talking to one newbie mm -hmm. and he just came and he's an experienced guy and he's getting all kind of questions like uh, someone is asking, he, he was he was doing working good technical work. Someone is asking, hey, do you have a Canadian experience? That was to me, I didn't get it because when you talk about computers, computer is computer, whether mm -hmm. it's Canada or US or China, it doesn't matter, right? So coming back to the job topic, I will say, don't do the mistake that I did many years ago. Basically, I what I used to do, go through and whatever job I see, oh my God, this is a big company. I need this job. So I'll try to modify my CV and try to learn whatever's there. And if I don't get it and I go for the next big thing. So I keep chasing, chasing, chasing. And I realize I wasted almost three to six months I am without any job. Right. So for that, what I will say that, so pick, say, assume you want to be a DevOps engineer or a cloud engineer. So pick that job set, do not change it. Do not say, okay, now I want to be a machine learning. I want to be AI engineer. No, it doesn't work like that. That is a very disjoint skill set mm -hmm. and you have to have very specialization on that. So we have one webinar also on that. We talk about what is uh, in the data field, what are the different kinds of jobs are there like data science versus data engineer. Mm -hmm. I'll post the link below in the, you can uh, take a look. And for the job, so just go in a local market, where you're Chicago, Toronto, wherever you are. So just look for through the local market mm -hmm. and see what kind of job listings are out there. Right. And on that job listing, just try to find what are the common technologies they are talking about. And those common technologies, 99%, forget 90, I'll say 100% are these technologies I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. They want you to have understanding of Linux operating system, Git source control, any one configuration management tool. It could be Ansible, Puppet, name of you, and and any one of the cloud. So these things, once you have in your belt, and then you attack the job, and when you have an honest application all the time, even mm -hmm. the reviewer, recruiter, whoever it is, or hiring manager, they always see that, okay, fact, this person has done certain things, mm -hmm. and there is always something that you will not know. It is perfectly all right. That's true. To be honest, I don't know anything. Anything I know, I know what to look for in Google. That's mm -hmm. all I know. I don't remember anything. Mm -hmm. So so they understand this fact. Okay, these are the things you don't know. But of course, these are transferable skills and you will learn on the job. But what they're looking for, you have the base stack ready. Right. And before you, then you, you shortlist your job, you find out, don't start bombarding CV. Then mm -hmm. maybe take three months three months, whether you are industry veteran, like 20 years, because I have a lot of clients who are like uh, 20, 30 years experience. They have been in the industry for a long time and they have even, either, even they or a newbie, like a, something come from a college, they pretty much have the same thing. But the reskilling is a little bit different. Someone is a veteran because they already know something about industry. They just want to transfer it. Mm -hmm. So I will say, try to highlight your experience. Don't hide it. What, whatever you did, even though the technology is obsolete, that is your strength because you did so many years work. So that is one thing. And that minimal stack and after three months, be prepared. And we also conduct a lot of uh, mock interview on our meetup and we do a lot of webinar on mock interview. Mm -hmm. You can join those session webinars and that will be a good start, yeah. I will say. Yeah. Wow, that's a <laughs> lot of information. Yeah, it's quite a lot. <laughs> but it's all really important and very fascinating as well. Um, I wanted to ask about AI as well. Oh my God. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, AI is I another beast. Yeah, AI is another beast. Mm -hmm. And actually, we have a webinar on that. Probably maybe next uh, session we can talk about AI and yeah. basically specifically into artificial intelligence, data science, and data engineering. Mm -hmm. So probably we'll have some industry veterans as well. Right. Uh, so they have been doing for 15 years, so they may give a better insight 
what is that mm -hmm. so i think that will be good starting point so i think for now i think uh that's it i think maybe we'll do it next time yes and thank you so much Tao, for thank you very having. much for today i've learned thank a lot you. yeah thank you cool. and thank you everybody for uh for listening and please subscribe and see you on the next episode bye